Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie. Uh, this video module is going to be concerned with the pricing of a, a durable a asset. Uh, we can consider this durable asset a land, which is the most durable of all assets. It's also an asset uh, that doesn't have to be uh, produced. Uh, Ronald Coase from the uh, University of Chicago, who later won a Nobel Prize, uh, came up with an interesting uh, uh, analysis of monopoly pricing of a durable asset. Now let's go to uh, a graph uh, in which we have the demand for this durable asset and we have the supply of it. Uh, it's so durable that uh, it, once it is produced, it, it is just there. It's uh, fixed in supply. The quantity is uh, Q1. Now we can assume that the monopolist uh, owns all of this asset. And the question is, how much will the monopolist, uh, uh, pr what price will the monopolist uh, sell this good? Now, one might think that the monopolist uh, would engage in uh, uh, price discrimination. Uh, that is, it could, in fact, uh, sell the first unit of land way up here at a price of uh, P1, the second unit of land at a price of P2, and a third, and a fourth, and on down uh, this demand curve. And you might think that the monopolist could then acquire uh, revenues uh, equal to zero, uh, uh, A, uh, B, um, Q, uh, 1, which would be equal to the area underneath the demand curve. And it would be equal to that if the monopolist could charge differential prices, simply because if you add up the individual prices that are charged for each one of these uh, units, uh, they basically will add to the uh, area of this, um, um, whatever you call this, this kind of uh, figure. But notice that the asset is durable. And if, in fact, the monopolist tried to charge these individual prices, uh, you've got to wonder if the first uh, uh, buyer of the land would actually pay P1 uh, for that unit because the first buyer has got to anticipate that the monopolist will want to get rid of the entire quantity of land, and the monopolist can't get rid of more than just a small quantity at a price uh, P1. And uh, uh, that individual would, be, uh, would consider itself to be a sucker for selling, for buying at that price, because later the price would go down uh, to P2 to get the next individual. The next individual would not buy it, because he or she would figure that the monopolist would have to lower the price in order to sell the next unit and, and so on down the line. As you move down this line, uh, the buyers would, would be reluctant to, uh, to pay the prices. Why? Because there would always be uh, a lower price at which the monopolist would sell. Well, you might anticipate that the monopolist would price the product like all monopolists where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Well, there is no marginal cost in, in, in this area, in this thing. You just have a supply curve that looks like this. Uh, if, in fact, you think of the marginal cost curve as being equal to zero, uh, the monopolist might charge a uh, price uh, QM, which would be, I mean, they would sell, uh, sell at a price where the marginal revenue curve uh, intersects the horizontal axis, or they would sell at a price uh, equal to uh, PM. But again, uh, the buyers can reason, well, if we pay PM, the monopolist is only going to get rid of QM uh, units of this durable good, QM units of land. It would still have uh, that much in the way uh, of land. So they know that the monopolist would have to lower the price uh, to get rid of the rest of the land, uh, and as a consequence, uh, they, would be, they would hold off uh, buying until the price, in fact, came down. The ironic part of this analysis is uh, what Coast uh, uh, suggested, and that is in order to get rid of the entire quantity of Q1 units of land, uh, the monopolist would have to charge a price of PC, uh, which is the uh, competitive price. 